Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at the TLC12015, so it's a 15 millimeter thick by fan by Thermalrite. So it's for your ultra compact thin cases where you can't fit a regularly thick fan. So first a little bit of uh, comparison as to how it ranks. For most recent ranking information, I do ask that you check out my best of video series that has the actual rankings for the fan uh, compared to my most recent data because I'm continually testing fans. It's just whenever I made this video series or this uh, presentation. So since this was made, I've updated a lot of things. So it's kind of that basic information. Uh, TLDR, the fan ranks overall fairly well compared to other fans in its uh, category or um, price point and size. So it could be worth considering. And while well, there aren't a lot of options for 15 millimeter thick fans, so let's just hop in and see how it actually performed. Before we get into the data, I would like to thank Mint Mobile for being today's video partner. Thanks to Mint Mobile's wireless plans, it is possible to not only switch away from big, expensive mobile companies, but to also have a quality, affordable plan for me and my family. Mint Mobile's premium wireless plan starts at just $15 a month for a three-month plan. I can get high-speed data and unlimited talks and talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. I can bring my own phone along and my current phone number so you don't need to memorize a new phone number, something I have always found difficult. Switching to Mint is super easy thanks to digital eSIM cards, which most phones have. You can sign up and activate immediately right from your own phone from the comfort of your own home. If your phone doesn't have a digital eSIM card, Mint will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. And right now, new customers, Mint Mobile is offering 50% off their first 12 months of unlimited plan. It's the best deal of the year and only available a limited time. If you're interested in learning more about Mint Mobile and switching, visit my link or by clicking the link in the video description down below. The first test is the case simulation test. It is taken at four key measurement locations to for various size computer cases, assuming a front to back airflow uh, in said computer case for air cooled type scenarios. The first data point is the six inch mark, which is rep representative of your small form factor cases, front to back airflow, or a short throw distance like having your fans at the bottom of your computer case blowing up towards your GPU. Then we have the nine inch mark. This would be compact towers. Think a case that can hold a standard ATX motherboard, but not in a lot of extra room beyond that. So 220 millimeter class fans. So you have the 11 inch mark, 320 millimeter class fans, or a standard 360 IAO would fit inside that computer case. And then we have the 14.5 inch mark, which is truly large towers. Think a case that can hold 340 millimeter class fans. We need something to compare against, so I have my control fan, and I've listed out a couple other uh, 15 millimeter thick fans as comparison data points. So the C12015 um, performs well enough compared to the other 15 millimeter thick fans, but a little bit underperforming compared to my control fan, which makes a lot of sense. It's not nearly as thick, so it shouldn't perform quite as well. At 100% PDOM fan signaling, once again, the story is very similar. It's underperforming compared to my control fan, but um, not too bad. They are underperforming compared to, to the knock to a 15 millimeter thick fan, but it's performing right in line with where it expected to be. Compared to other fans um, that I've tested, noise normalized results. Other than at very big cases, it actually does fairly well. It's kind of in the middle of the pack. So that is, uh, I would say, a very good result for the fan altogether. If we crank things up to 100% PW fan signaling, spinning at 1,800 RPM, and it's bottom middle of the pack, again, it makes a lot of sense. It does actually fairly okay, but wouldn't really recommend it for very big cases. Uh, nine inch mark, airspeed versus noise. And, you know, it doesn't have the same sort of, um, how do I want to say it, 
upward trend as other fans. It's a little bit flatter. But it again, it's a super thin fan. So the fact that it has the level of performance that it does is an impressive result for it. Now we're looking at performance through the CPU air cooler. At this time, I'd also like to thank my Patreon and YouTube members. You guys rock. And those of you who have given me supers. It's uh, thanks to that kind of support that I've been able to purchase a radiator recently and start adding and testing for it with fans. At this time, the air speed going through the radiator and my Noctua U12A air cooler are near on equiv equivalent. So the resistance to that airflow is approximately the same. I'm not calling the cooling potential the same, I'm calling the resistance to the airflow the same. So it allows me to equate the data at this time. Uh, for future support, I am trying to build up to get a couple test systems built so that I can start getting thermal data for all of you and this kind of testing. Back to the regularly scheduled program. So the first the left graph here is uh, airspeed versus RPM. It's basically a blade efficiency graph. And the fans are right in line with my control fan. It's almost equivalent. They just don't have the same sort of top end. On the right side is airspeed versus noise. And here is where they... Um, actually, they do really quite well. They almost line up with my control fan. So that is a pretty impressive result, actually. Um... How does it rank against other fans? Well, the 120-15B uh, is the best 15 millimeter thick fan that I've tested so far in noise normalized results. It produces the highest amount of uh, air speed from a, as a new fan. Again, I can't test um, bearing quality yet to no longevity. It is just a limiting factor in what I can test at this time. So I don't know about its longevity years down the road, but it overall does quite well and it potentially is cheap enough that it could be worth it to just buy them and replace them as they go out. At 100% PDUM fan signaling, well, it's effectively tied with the P12 Slim, despite its slower RPM, and it's even a little bit quieter. So it's a great, 15 millimeter thick fan. Um, I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's an impressive result. Uh, in an empirical sense versus other fans, it isn't nearly as good, it doesn't spin nearly as fast, but it's perfectly fine. Uh, how does it do in that airspeed versus decibel rating? Remember, every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. Uh, it's right in the middle of the pack. It's a good result for it to sit in. Now, it isn't a top tier fan, it doesn't sit at the top end of the graph, but it's sitting right in line with other fans, which could very well be what um, Thermal Rate was targeting is just to meet uh, the average of other fans, which is something to do on a budget. So it's a good thing to do. How about in terms of CFM testing? CFM testing is pretty basic. You have a fan, you have a tube, you'll blow air down the tube, and you get the volumetric flow rate. Uh, ignores all aspects of the fan about how good the airflow coming out the back of the fan is, meaning does the fan shoot air off to the sides or does it shoot it in a more cylinder down the back? Uh, it pretty much ignores all those type of scenarios. Uh, so the blade efficiency of the fan is right in line with my control fan. If we take a look at the noise performance, it is underperforming versus my control fan. How does it rank against other fans? Well, it's towards the upper middle of the pack and it's outperformed the other 15 millimeter thick fans, so it's a pretty good result. At 100%, well, RPM does matter. And here it's basically sitting right in line with the other 15 millimeter thick fans. So it kind of dropped in position relatively compared to other tests here. But overall, still perfectly adequate. In terms of that airspeed versus decibel rating, um, 
pretty much middle of the pack. It's, it's fine, perfectly adequate, pretty good. Now we're on to value proposition for this $10 fan. Value proposition is performance per dollar. It is not real performance. It is just how much performance you get for the dollar. So a fan that is cheap enough, even if its performance was actually terrible, could rank very well. Just like if a fan was super expensive and it performed, uh, I don't know, in beyond physics mode, uh, could rank incredibly well on this graph as well. So just take everything here with a grain of salt. If you're on a budget and you're just trying to fill out your computer case with fans, it's a good place to look. Uh, if you're just, I don't know, I, I wouldn't use this for CPU air coolers personally, except to uh, figure out what might be the best option. So the C12015 does rank pretty well as a case fan, not quite at the top, but overall pretty good at 100%, still in that pretty or very good category at 11 inches same sort of story it ranks really quite well see fan testing well towards the top of the graphs so it is definitely worth considering there um, when we take a look through the cpu air cooler again ranks pretty well overall well towards the top of the graphs um, not too many fans perform give a better value than this ten dollar fan and that brings us to the end of the video. This is the raw data. The raw data does belong to me and this channel. If you want to use it for your own personal use, you may go ahead and do so. If you're going to use it in any sort of written publication, journal, monetization, I do ask the reference me and my channel. After all, I'm the one who generated it. Uh, right now, it takes me about two weeks to go from start to finish for testing to publication of a video. Uh, so if you like what I'm doing, think about joining me as a YouTube or Patreon member. It does go a long way in supporting this channel. I know that ask for monetary support is uh, kind of a tall order so if um, you want to support it but you don't have the money or don't want to invest in this channel that's perfectly fine but think about hitting that subscribe button it really does go a long way in helping uh, support this channel in and of itself if you got suggestions for ways that the videos can be improved this is a little bit of an older video or um, presentation so I've since done updates but I'm always trying to improve the videos and the video formatting, so I'm willing to do that. If you've got fans that you want me to take a look at, I'll try to roll it in in the future. But right now, um, I'm kind of months out from getting around to doing that type of more testing. Um, and with that, thank you very much for watching my video, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.